Hello, everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of Valpo Football Preview, along with head coach Dave Cicchini. This is Todd Eichow. Today we'll uh, first start by Dave taking a look back at uh, the ball game at Montana. It was a loss, mm -hmm. and nobody likes to talk about moral victories. We've <laughs> sat, I think we've sat in this seat before, right. coaches in the past, and we've said, all right, enough with the moral victories. But this was a game, even though it was a loss, that probably had more positives than negatives. Sure, absolutely. We, we have a lot to be proud of. Uh, I'm proud of the way our kids played. We, we competed. Uh, held the lead briefly in the second quarter, um, uh, had uh, 450 yards of total yeah. offense against a pretty good defense uh, filled with scholarship football players. So uh, there's a lot to take away from the game. Uh, it was just unfortunate for us. We had some turnovers, uh, three of them, all three really uh, hurt us from an opportunity to actually go forth and win the game. And had we done a better job protecting the football on offense, uh, th this might have been a really, really close football game. You know, we went in a week ago talking about, well, one great thing is you got a lot of skill guys. You got a lot of right. weapons. We saw a lot of different guys make plays, starting with freshmen, sure. going all the way to seniors. Yeah, yeah, no, Donnie Navarro stepped up, you know, as a backup slot receiver came in. I mean, he had impressed us as coaches. Uh, all through camp, we knew he was capable of doing some good things. He, he did that right off the bat with a 50-yard reception and then later a, a big touchdown catch, which was great for him. Griffin Norberg stepped up, had over 100 yards receiving. Frank Katrine had a 60-yard-plus uh, reception. So there were a number of different players that were able to come up uh, and, and make big contributions. You said going in, we'll play two quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. As it turned out, Chris Duncan, in his first collegiate game, didn't look like it was his first collegiate right. game. Uh, Jimmy Seawald obviously is still your starting quarterback, right. but it is good to know you've got another guy there as the season progresses, if, if Jimmy gets injured, what, what have you, sure. he has an off day. Yeah who you can go to. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Chris stepped in and, and uh, he, he did make some some mistakes early on, was a little nervous, had had to uh, delay a game. and, and But really, you know, he shows the the extra element that he adds, his mobility, uh, his, his uh, you know, the quarterback runs that we had called with him, some of the scrambles that he made. And, and he stepped up and made big throws in the face of uh, a pretty tough Montana pass rush and, and uh, you know, made plays on, you know, as big a stage as, as we'll have uh, this year. So it was really encouraging to see him. Again, we had watched him mature and, and take the majority of the reps through spring football. And uh, he had a great fall camp. And, and it was great to see him be able to translate that uh, under pressure. Early in the game, in short yardage situations or, or when you got inside the red zone, uh, Chris came in the game. Do you anticipate that's how things will go maybe? Well, I, I think that's something that we're definitely going to look at. And we're going to uh, continue to explore those options uh, over the course of the next couple of weeks and see you know, if Chris continues uh, to master the offense and, and, and continues to get better. Uh, he certainly adds that element, which, uh, again, forces a defense to have to spend time adjusting to the different quarterback runs and things that we can do. So that, that's absolutely an option. You had mentioned, hey, you were in the game, had a chance maybe for the lead late in the third quarter and had a turnover. And then it looked like once they got going, obviously, their quarterback, kind of changed the momentum of the game. Yes. He, he just started making incredibly yep. pinpoint throws. You had good coverage on a lot yep. of the plays. Um, that's where the game kind of turned, and it's hard to blame your guys. There right. were a few mental things, right. but probably the number one factor was their quarterback just started to drop dimes. Yeah, yeah it was his first start. Uh, he was a Division One transfer who sat behind a pretty good quarterback a year ago, played very minimally. Uh, but he had had some time to to learn the system, and, and this being his first game, I think it took him a little bit to, to get going, but we did an outstanding job on defense. We started off that uh, uh, second half with an interception and two three and outs to start that. So actually just playing as good as we possibly can play, and then all of a sudden it just flipped. He made a couple of big throws. Uh, they had a couple of runs that they gashed us up the middle, and it was just bang, 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 three straight touchdowns, and that really just it went from a, a nail-biter of a game to them just blowing it open there uh, by the end of the third quarter, start of the fourth. One of the big positives, I think, looking back on the ball game, is that J.J. Nunes has not lost yeah. a beat. He, he yeah. basically hasn't played in almost two seasons. Yeah. And uh, he was a difference maker. And certainly as you go on in the season, get into PFL play, it looks like he's on his way to 
Barring injury again, yep. spectacular Yeah, season. no, I mean, it was great. He worked so hard to get to where he is right now. And, and uh, coming back from the knee injury, he worked hard uh, to get the sixth year of eligibility, which wasn't a, a, just a given thing. And, and so he went through a lot, and it was so satisfying to see him have the type of impact, 10 tackles in the game, had the interception, uh, had a fumble that unfortunately got uh, overruled on video replay, uh, but just it, it was really nice to have him back there in the secondary, not just with his play, but also his leadership that he brings to the table. Do you think going forward as a team, being able to play with Montana for three quarters gives this team a little more confidence maybe as you approach I think so. The weeks I, ahead? I, yeah, I mean, we, we talked about it that this year being different with all the experience that we had uh, coming back, all of the returning uh, players, uh, players that if they hadn't started had played significantly all of last year. Uh, so we knew that we were a more physical team than we've been in prior years and a more experienced team. And, that, and that's starting to pay off. I think our players really believe in themselves, believe in the, that this football team is capable of going up against a scholarship program and, and competing and, and having a chance to win the game. And, and, uh, and, and they're rightful to have that confidence. You know, we are. We, we've gelled. Uh, our players are experienced. And um, I, I think uh, this is going to be a great challenge, you know, segueing into Duquesne this coming week. Uh, to test that because they're another very quality scholarship uh, Division One FCS opponent. Yeah, don't be fooled by Duquesne's first week against one of the best FCS teams in the right. country in South Dakota State. They got beat soundly, uh, but South Dakota State's going to do that to a lot of scholarship yes. teams this yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, right? they, no question they are one of the top two, three, four teams uh, in the country. And, and I think Duquesne was a little... Shocked by that, the uh, South Dakota State made some big plays early on and blew the game open right from the the, the first quarter. Uh, but Duquesne is very talented. You know they're picked uh, to win their conference uh, eight and three a year ago. Uh, so they've got a lot of players coming back. I believe they've got 12 uh, FBS transfers on their roster right now. Uh, they've got a freshman tailback, uh, I'm sorry, he's a sophomore tailback uh, in Hines who actually won the FCS freshman of the year after rushing for about 1,200 yards as, as a true freshman. So he's coming back. Uh, they've got uh, Stewart, their quarterback, uh, is a Boise State uh, transfer, and, and he didn't play that poorly. Uh, you know, despite what the score might might show, and and so they've got tremendous talent on offense. Uh, they're going to give us fits. We've got to be able to stop the run game there. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, they have eight returning starters on defense. Their entire secondary is back, so they're playing with an awful lot of confidence. Is there? They just ran into a, a South Dakota State team that is just loaded with uh, you know NFL caliber talent. All right, you look at Saturday. Going to be nice to be home. Mm. You're going against a team that's probably smarting a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, it's kind of a similar situation to Montana. The longer you can stay in the game, the more the confidence can grow, I assume. Then. Absolutely. I mean, if, if we can get off to a quick start, be able to move the football early on and get a couple of early stops on defense, uh, we, we feel like uh, our confidence can continue to grow. Uh, we certainly have some talented players that are just, you know, with each every passing practice and rep, uh, just get more and more, you know, used to uh, just gelling and trusting in one another, and that's what it's all about. All right, good luck this week. Thanks, Dave. All right, thanks, Tom. For head coach Dave Cicchini, this is Todd Eichel. Thanks for joining us this week on Valpo Football Preview.